great. Keeps getting better. How many more bones will you crush? Now I'm the bad guy. She wouldn't even have a fly. Hey everybody, welcome back to Villain Review episode 101 and today we are looking at Yellow Jacket from Ant-Man. Is Yellow Jacket good or is he not good? Let's figure this out. I know this is odd, but I'd like you to be there. This is my moment, I want you to see it. Going to MIT and then being hired by Hank Pym, Darren Cross slowly became obsessed with learning the secrets to Pym's Ant-Man suit. With Pym constantly telling Cross, Psh, that junk don't exist, dummy. Cross would get pissed that Pym wouldn't tell him the secret. Over the years, Cross would double him, Pym, and force Hank out of his own company with the help of his daughter, Hope. From there, Darren would try his absolute best to figure out the whole Ant-Man shrinking thing and sell it to potential buyers for billions. Honestly, I'm not impressed. First of all, let's talk about his main motive, okay? The main motive is just making lots and lots of money. Wow, that's not good. Honestly, this is one of the most boring motives you can have in a villain, and it just seems like a boring way to write a villain. In the comics, he has this heart condition that's potentially life-ending, and he constantly needs new tech to keep him alive. But here, no, he just he just wants money so he can buy the new Fortnite skins or something freaking weird like that. I know that Marvel villains aren't often the most fleshed out characters, but when the Yellow Jacket we get in a 30-minute episode of What If is 10 million times better than the two-hour movie version, I know something's wrong. I guess you could also say that he wants to like shove it in Pim's face and be like, oh look, I can do it, like you should have trusted me. But even with that, I'm not interested. Villains with understandable motives are complex and interesting. Cross just wants money though and he's a jerk, so like, what the heck man, screw you. Hey little guy. <laughs> I know I just said Cross is unlikable, and sometimes that's a good thing for a villain, right? Characters like Handsome Jack, they're annoying and irritating, but they're still hilarious, so I enjoy them. Cross, though, is just unlikable, and worse than that, he's boring. People give Jim Carrey's Riddler a really hard time, but one thing I think the movie did well is sell that, that desperation for Bruce Wayne's approval. I really got that from his character. With Cross, he just seems like mildly annoyed when Pym doesn't approve of him. I know what you're thinking, he's annoying, unbelievable, but, but maybe he's intimidating, right? Because intimidation, as we all know, is one of the most important factors in a villain. Nope, not at all. Unfortunately for Cross, he's not a very scary villain either, and Marvel's formula of not having many stakes doesn't really help him out here. I mean, absolutely no offense to the actor who plays Cross, and I think that with what he was given, he actually did his best. That being said, I do think the part was a little miscast. With Jeff Bridges in Iron Man 1, who keep in mind Cross is just a copy but worse version of, Jeff Bridges at least manages to be intimidating because of his performance and some scenes where he's allowed to be scary. With Cross though, he's just like this entitled douchebag who wants to make money. Honestly, I think the character could have been a lot better, and I think the motive just the motive just set him up for failure. Do I look like a monster? I want my daddy! In a Marvel movie like Ant-Man, the point of the movie is to set up Ant-Man for future movie. If we were gonna go off of that goal, the movie did great because I love Scott Lang. He's a great character. That being said, the movie doesn't give Cross a lot of time to be fleshed out, and because of that, I think he's really lacking as a character. I think one of the reasons Killmonger and Thanos worked so well is because in both of their first, like, main appearances, we've already met all the heroes, so we don't have to, like, set them up. We have time to take some time back and sit with Killmonger and sit with Thanos, see some backstory, and I think Cross really could have used that. I think if we saw some flashbacks of like Pym mistreating Cross, it could have made some really interesting dynamics for Hank as a character and for Cross. He could have been a lot more sympathetic. Instead, we just get like vague comments here and there about his past and they don't really make us understand him any better. The one scene where he might get to be intimidating gets cut short by this weird sort of comical line. Like it's sort of comical, but it's not that funny. And besides that, there's not much. Okay, okay, I've been going off on this dude for a while, but let's talk about some good stuff. When he finally gets the yellow jacket suit on, things start to pick up a bit. Yes, I think he's a bit over the top, even for supervillain standards. But I, for one, think the design of the suit is actually pretty cool. The fight he gets with Scott is also pretty enjoyable, and I like how he uses the shrinking tech. 
I'm by no way convinced this dude is as smart as the movie wants me to think he is, but I like that he adds his own little flair to the suit instead of just like copying it directly. It's nothing crazy, it's not one of Marvel's better fights, but for this character, heck, I'll take it, man. Stand. I, uh, I don't know what to say here, because Cross, he doesn't do that much bad stuff in the movie. Like, he wants to kill Hank, and he wants to kill Cassie, but for some reason, he doesn't do either. He says, he says he's gonna kill Hank, right, in the, in this scene right here, and the, or that was at least his plan, but he does end up doing it because Hope is there. Why does he, wait, 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 oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up! Why does he then call Hope? and tell her he's adding more security if he knows she's there. This man is not smart. He's dumb. I'm telling you also, if he knows Hank and Hope are going to be a problem, why doesn't he kill both of them? This man's stupid. I guess you could say, oh, J Films, J Films. He wanted, he wanted the Ant-Man suit from Hank. Then why would he go and try to kill Hank the night before the one person who he knows can operate the suit. Am I crazy? A a am I missing something? This makes no sense to me. Also, if he wants to kill Cassie to get back at Scott, why doesn't he? He has plenty of opportunities. Like, what the heck? Honestly, this guy is just, this guy is just annoying. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done talking about him. The Yellow Jacket. <sighs> All right. Uh... Yeah, Yellow Jacket is a villain, technically. His origin is like a line of dialogue, like, Oh, Hank Pym was mean, he didn't trust me. And his motive is wanting money, and I think that's really boring. As a character, I don't think he's that smart. He's about as intimidating as a toddler with a stick, a, a very dull stick, that is. And I don't think the performance matches the character super well. He doesn't have enough scenes to make him interesting, and the one scene that he does get that's not awful is just a pretty decent final fight. He's also stupid, so there's that. Yellow Jacket gets a big old two. Could that be done? Well, it's not a legend anymore. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to let me know what you think of Yellow Jacket in the comments below. I make a new villain review every single Monday, and I swear, most of the time, they're a lot better than this. So if you enjoyed it, subscribe, because you don't want to miss them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Yellow Jacket, man. Ah, <sighs> what the heck?